here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review on the new Winsor & Newton watercolor markers and here I was playing with them a bit yesterday, last night, trying to get um, a feel for coloring with them, blending with them and everything. And um, I just want to show you, I picked these up at uh, Jerry's Artorama. Uh, they were on sale and then I had a coupon that it allowed me to use on top of it. So I got these for $2.69 each. I only have the eight colors, um, but the regular price on these are $5.99 a piece. So they are more expensive markers. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually just test them out. I wanna show you here, these are the colors that I got. Um, that would be full strength up towards the top and then I faded them down with water. Now the interesting thing about these markers is that they um, do have a permanent light fast guarantee on them. Um, most of these were A, which is permanent, and um, the burnt sienna was actually AA, which was extremely permanent. And now when I say permanent, I don't mean that you can't lift them back up with water, like a permanent marker per se, like a Sharpie. It just means that they're not going to, uh, excuse me, fade when exposed to light. So that's what that means. And uh, there, I just kind of just blended some together. And here was when my paintbrush was, uh, had some ink on it. I just kind of faded it out just to see how they looked um, when they were really light. So um, one thing I want to try, I actually have a bunch of other brands of markers here. I found a color that I have pretty similar in different brands. So what I want to do is um, actually swatch them out over here. We'll put the um, Windsor Newton one up top and I'll just put, uh, uh, Winsor Newton, then we'll do Memento, which is another one of my favorites. I'm just kind of jotting it down there. Uh, Tim Holtz here. Everyone's asking about the Tim Holtz markers. Okay, Tim Holtz Distress. Uh, this is a Spectrum Aquas. We've got the Whispers, which I've seen them. Darice bought that company. It used to be Sugarloaf. Um, Darice bought them, and then I've seen them on sale online um, at Joann's and Consumer Crafts. This one is Tombow. A little bit lighter there. And this is La Plume, which is not one of my favorites. Look, you can see it's pretty dry, but there it's a little bit older, too. I always find the Tombows, I'm um, sorry, the La Plumes tend to dry out on me and the Distress. I'll either get them and they'll be completely juicy or I'll pick them up and they'll be completely dry. I don't know what it is about those markers. Okay, so I just want to let those sit and dry for a bit and then we'll go actually go through it with a um, with a wet brush later to see how they lift. So um, let's just do a little bit of coloring here. This um, Lady Slipper, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Um, this, I will link to a video where I show you how to draw this, and I'll also, um, in the video description, link to a packet of, um, illustrations I have for sale in my shop in case you want to just purchase the illustration. I'm going to use a little sap green. Now, their sap is super vivid. Um, I'm putting that kind of in the shadow areas here, and I'm working on my Canson XL Mixed Media Journal. Then I'm going to add some yellow ochre because I feel like that green is way too um, bright and I can actually go in there and blend right with this marker. Look at that. You can see I can get right in there and blend it right out. A little bit. So that's kind of nice. Um, so I recommend working on watercolor paper or if you have uh, some mixed media pad that will accept light washes. Probably having your markers roll through your artwork is not the best possible solution. Oh, so these have a bullet, t uh, bullet tip on one end and they have a brush tip on the other. I really prefer the brush tip. I'll show you there again. Now if I want to add some more dark in there, I can add a little indigo. Okay, i got to set these over there. They're going to drive me bananas rolling across my work like that. And if I want to just get a little bit, I can use the bullet tip there. Just got a little bit of the indigo in there. And actually, that doesn't, that doesn't seem like it's giving me much color. I guess it is. I really prefer the uh, the bullet tip. You can see how much juicier it is. All right, now while this is still kind, I think it's kind of a good idea um, to mix the colors when they're um, let's make sure that's got water in it um, when they're fairly fresh because they tend to blend better that way. But I'm just letting those sit over on the corner of those greens just because I want to I want to kind of have them. I don't know. I want to see more fairly because like if I just did it right away then the one I colored last is obviously going to blend better than the one I colored first so that's also um, why I did that. I figure if it dries for a few minutes while I'm coloring this it's going to give us a much better more fair representation. You can see how easily they liquefy. We're going to go over here. Oh, I apologize. There goes the water pump. 
I hate it when that happens. <laughs> it's one of the joys of filming downstairs in my basement, but, you know, I don't really have much else I can complain about, I guess. I should have warned the children that I was filming, and they would have avoided running water while I was doing that. Oh well. Alright, I'm just going to color this in here. There we go. So you can see, it blends pretty well, pretty much like watercolor. Um, now for the stem, I want the stem to be a little bit lighter, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with this cad yellow hue, which is a super vivid color. One thing I found out about this, and last time I did this, it okay, it's not doing it this time, but when I popped off the top, the actual, the entire top came off, and it didn't do it this time, so I'm not going to try to, because I don't want it to do that on purpose anymore, but it's, I'm just going to refill it with watercolor paints, I'm like, hey, if that comes off that easy, it'll be great to refill. Um, and I'm using the bullet tip just to get in there because I know that it's a little bit smaller and easier to control. I find that the, I like the brush tips on these markers better than the brush tips on like the Spectrum Aquas or some of the other brands I've used. But then again, they're also, you know, a lot more expensive. So, I mean, like the Spectrum Aquas in the sets, if you buy them at like Hallmark Scrapbook, they're less than $2 a marker. And these, you know, the cheapest I could get them, and that was with on sale and a coupon. And most sites you can't use both. Um, was two sixty nine, and so you know you just have to kind of decide what you can get it for and what's the important factors for you. Um, all right, so for the, um, I want to use some of this magenta in my shadow areas on the flower here. And then I'm going to blend it with some permanent rose. Oops, I think I want to use the brush though. I'm still, I should really be able to grasp that the pointy end is the, is the bullet end. Get in there with that. And then I think I'll just use water. There, the water pumps off. I hope that I hope I didn't lose too many of you guys with that. That's not my favorite thing. All right, let's blend that out. So you can get a really nice, pretty subtle blend. Now, if that that's a little, um, I would like that to be a little more purple. So what I think I'm going to do is actually just go in and add a little bit of turquoise, a few little, just a few little dashes with the bullet tip. And then I can spread that out a little bit, blend that right in. So these do blend really well. You know, obviously, probably the best thing to do in that situation would be to color it off onto a, onto a um, scrap of plastic or something. But I just I wanted to kind of really show you using the markers on paper because I think most people would probably get these. Um, they would be artists and they'd want to take them out and be able to use them in applications like that. So while my brush is dirty with that color, though, I'm going to add it to some of these outside petals. I'm going to put some yellow ochre on these guys. And I think I'm going to do a little bit more of that pink. Oh, my cat is over there trying to climb onto my uh, my workbench. She's not dead. Oh, see, this is what I mean. That's happened to me a couple times. Um, so you can actually see the size of the little pad in there and how much um, paint is in there. But I think it's going to be really easy to re-ink when it runs out. Now, these are not marketed as refillable markers. So just I just want to tell you that. That's at your own risk. But I figure if it's a disposable marker and you're just going to be pitching it anyway, then what's the harm in re-inking it once or twice, especially if the tips are still good. Um, so the body of these markers are very similar to like the um, Letraset. Oh yeah, gee, you know what? I should have showed you the Aqua markers by Letraset. Um, let me just scribble with that. Now we'll have to just keep in mind that that one was put. That one was put last. The thing I don't like about the Letraset Aqua markers is that the tips seem to fray really easily. So. Um, and I, you know, and one side is juicy because I have these in here instead of completely flat. They're kind of tipped up on one end, so that's not ideal. I've had these for quite a while, too. And that's another thing is that the Windsor Newtons are brand new. The Spectrum uh, Aquas are brand new. Some of those other markers are older, so, you know, they may, they're going to be probably a little bit drier um, than these brand new ones. So we have to keep that in mind, to, You know, we have to bear that in mind as we're comparing. Um, but I'm just liquefying this. It blends really well. It blends as well as a watercolor. Um, so I'd say they probably blend a little bit easier than other watercolor markers like the Spectrum Aquas. Um, I do love Spectrum Aquas. They are really a great value, great bang for your buck. Uh, I feel like I want a little bit of that 
magenta in there too. I feel like I can really get in there and add more color and blend it and I don't always feel that way when I'm working with markers I kind of feel like sometimes once it's there it's there and I can't really do much to it but I don't feel like that with these markers so that's kind of a good thing I was playing with these a bit so and this isn't the first time I, I've had these for about a week um, and I've been you know I've I played with them a bit last night because I just wanted to be really familiar with them before I started to give a review. I just want to tint that a little bit. I don't really want a lot of color. That's pretty light. So I can pick up some color from some areas and move it around. But um, you know, it's it's pretty. It's pretty good to use. Pretty fun and easy. And uh, I just want to use this magenta. I want to add some of the, like, the little veining in there. So the tips on these markers are a bullet. They're not as fine as the one on the Spectrum Aqua. I'd rather if I was going to put these little veins on there, honestly, I'd probably feel a little more comfortable with the tips on the Mementos or the Spectrum Aquas or like the Stampin' Up! ones. But I think that's, I mean, I don't think it's bad. I only have eight colors, so I am a little limited as far as palette. However, I feel that they blend really well, so I don't need as many colors, if that makes sense. Um, this line of markers only comes in 36 colors at the moment, and I reckon it's because they want to make the markers light fast, and you're very limited in what you can use to, you know, for a pigment to be thin enough to fit into a marker nib and to also be light fast. So, I mean, I've never had a problem with any with any um, products I've used from Windsor & Newton. Uh, I know they've discontinued products that weren't big sellers in the past, like their pastels, which were fine. Um, I enjoyed them. And they're well known for their watercolors. They're probably most known for the watercolors. So I have no complaints um, about any of the Windsor & Newton products. All right, so for this over here, now please keep in mind that the Electroset one might lift easier because I've put it down more recently and these other ones had a couple minutes to sit up because what is it? It's 12 minutes into the video. So these have had like 10 minutes to sit up and that one's only had about three. Um, I'm actually gonna just gonna go right up and down through this with this uh, water brush with a um, with a flat nib on it. So we'll just go back and forth and see how they compare. Uh, the Windsor Newton lifts up super good, and that was the one that I put down first. The Tim Holtz one lifts up pretty good. The uh, the um, Spectrum Aqua lifts up really good. The what was it? A Whispers lifts up good. The um, what was the T? The Tombow, that lifts up pretty good. The La Plume stained, that didn't lift up very well. And the, uh, actually the Aqua Marker, the Electrosa Aqua Marker is staining a little bit, even though that was the newest one. So, um, you know, there's just to give you a little bit of, uh, a little bit of information there. Now I also want to just kind of mix some of these colors. These, and, and these markers, I'm really not a huge fan of the Tim Holtz Distress Markers. I, I do like a lot of his products, and I find the markers to be a little um, unpredictable, I guess. I find sometimes they work great, and sometimes they're just like a hot mess. Sometimes they're dry, sometimes they're dripping with juice. And I store them all horizontally, I store them all the same, and I still run into those issues with those markers. Um, but, I have other, but there's a lot of people that just love them. So I'm just gonna mix some colors here nearby that mix well. Just, I'm just kind of going like a rainbow here a little bit. Or in a spectrum, not really rainbow order because I would have started with... Ah! I'm a klutz. Klutz today. I'm going with that pink. I'm going with this pink. Actually, this pink mixes better. I think... Let me sneak a little of that pink in there. I think that taking that, that permanent rose and making an orange with it is probably a better idea. Let's do that a little bit of yellow next door here. These are very reactive with water. Um, again, I would, I, I don't think, I think they're pretty awesome, but I don't think they're like $6 a marker awesome, but I don't think Copics are $6 a marker awesome. I mean, I'm really, I think, I don't know, I'm, I'm not one to spend $6 on a marker, to tell you the truth. All right, you can see how they blend together. They blend really nicely. I wish I'd got a cadmium red because the cadmium yellow blends so well and it's such a nice color. Um, let's see how the permanent rose... Yeah, the permanent rose and cad uh, yellow make a pretty decent orange, but I would have been much happier if I had a cadmium, um, cadmium red. All right, let's see how those two blend. I like that sap green, but it's super, super bright. It's almost like a permanent green light. The turquoise is really lovely. I'm just rinsing my brush, even though it's a water brush, because I don't want to get just mud here. Go into the indigo. 
and then I can go over into that magenta and that rose and get some more color there so you know gorgeous colors I'm really happy with the purchase I'm glad that I got a deal on these just because I think six dollars is a bit much um, but I love how they have their light fast and the brush tips are really wonderful on these markers so I know a lot of you guys have been considering purchasing these I think I think I would shop around um, check I don't know if the Mary Artist has it. They just put, gave me a coupon code. I'll check if they have it. I'll put a link below and I'll give. I'll put that coupon code to share. Um, I got mine at Jerry's and I used a 25% off coupon. I think it was called Miss You 25. I found it on Retail Me Not, um, and they let the they took the coupon. The coupon took the 25% off the sale price, so I got them for $2.69 each. I know that Blick and Cheap Joe's has these. Um, and again, I would try the different sites and try applying coupon codes and see where you, how you can get them um, at the best price. I think these are probably going to be more light fast, so if that's... Well, they have a light fast rating. I'm not saying that these aren't light fast. I'm just saying there's no documentation on how light fast these are. This being from a reputable art supply uh, manufacturer with light fast rating they took the time to have light fast ratings done um i would be more inclined to trust this if you were like doing work for sale and you want or you were going to hang it up in direct sunlight something that's going to be in a sketchbook it doesn't really matter as much because it's not going to get the exposure to light so you know if you're if you are um really concerned with light fast properties and markers i would definitely go for these just because you can't get those that guarantee with other markers um if you just want to sketch for fun um and it's going to stay in a sketchbook or um like in a scrapbook i think you'd be fine with any of these other brands um my favorites being the spectrum aqua the memento and the tombow but um everyone has their own unique uh working styles and preferences so like i mean some people might not like the big barrel so they prefer a memento or whatever so um, i always recommend you buy a couple of the different brands and you use them they all work together i can use all these markers together and then you decide um what you really like before you like invest a lot of money in one set i hope you found this helpful um i had a good time doing this review for you please uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below and again i will put a link to um to this tutorial so if you want to know how to draw it you can and also a link to the um, packet of images in my shop if you just want to buy some that you can print out in color um, that's fine too thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until next time happy crafting